in the last class we discussed about few relationships like d a o is t t d s minus p d v and from there we got relationships like del u by del s at constant v is t and del u by del v at constant s is minus p we also found dlh dh is tds plus vdp from there we got del h by del s at constant pressure gives t and del h by del p at constant s gives v. Then we had del d a is minus p d v minus s d t and from there we got del a by del v at constant p is minus p and del a by del t at constant v minus s and we had d g is v d p minus s t t and from there we got del g by del p at constant temperature is volume and del g by del t at constant pressure gives us minus s. Okay, so, these are the relationships we have, uh, we, have, we have got so far. Okay. Now, if we consider the expression uh, del u, we have considered the expression. Now, we got del u by del s at constant p is t. From there, we get del 2 u by del s del v is del p del v. Okay. We also had del u by del v at constant s is minus p. Okay. From there, we can write del 2 u by del v del s minus del p by del s at constant p. This is at constant s. Okay, since u is a state function, so since u is a state function, says d u is exact differential that we have obtained previously, we can write del t by del v at constant s is minus del p by del s constant v. Right? Okay. Similarly, we can also obtain del 
del T by del P at constant S is del V by del S at constant E. We can also obtain del S by del V at constant temperature is del P by del T at constant volume and del S by del P at constant temperature is minus del V by del T at constant pressure. So, these four relation, these four equations or expressions are known as Maxwell's relations. We can have another set of Maxwell's relation like del U by del S at constant V is del H by del S as constant P, del U by del V at constant S is del A by del V at constant T, del H by del P at constant S is del G by del P at constant T and del A by del T constant V is del G by del T at constant P. Okay. So, these are another sets of set of Maxwell's relations. Next, we will prove that or show that for ideal gas del u by del v at constant temperature is 0. Okay, so, for isothermal process, okay, we, we know that for ideal gas, there is no change in internal energy. If temperature does not change, then internal energy will not change. Okay. So, let us see whether we can prove it or not here. Okay. So, prove. We know d u is T d s minus P d a, right. Again, s is a function of P and V, right. We know S function of temperature and volume. So, we get D S is del S by del T at constant volume D T plus del S by del V at constant temperature D V. So, if you substitute the value of T D S in equation 1. So, we get substituting the value of d s in equation 1, we get d u is T del S by del T at constant volume times d t plus t del s by del v at constant temperature times d v minus p d v. Okay. And we can rearrange this like t del s by del t at constant volume d t plus t del s by del v at constant temperature minus p times Right. Suppose this is our equation 2. 
again e u is function of T and V, right. So, internal energy is function of temperature and volume. So, you can write d u is del u by del t at constant volume times d t plus del u by del v at constant temperature t v. And this is our equation 3. Now, if we equate or equating the coefficients of d v in equations 2 and 3, we get T del S by del V at constant temperature minus P is del U y del V at constant temperature. Okay, now, from Maxwell's relations, we know del S by del V is nothing but d P by del P by del T at constant volume minus P. Now, for ideal gas, P is N at T by V, we know. So, del P by del T at constant volume gives <coughs> Okay, n r by v. So, we can write T times n r by v minus p is del u by del v at constant temperature. Okay. So, we can write del u by del v at constant temperature is 0. Right? Okay. So, now we have proved that for ideal gas, for ideal gas, del u by del v at constant temperature equals to 0. Okay, so, next we will prove okay, the change in internal, the change in internal energy as we change the pressure at constant temperature will again 0 for ideal gas. So, we will prove proof is very similar. Okay. So, here we will consider H or enthalpy instead of internal energy. So, H we know nothing but U plus P V, right. Okay, and for ideal gas P V is nothing but N R T. So, we get U plus N R T. So, for ideal gas P V is nothing but N R T. So, we can write U is nothing but H minus N R T. And this gives you del u by del p at constant temperature is nothing but del h by del p at constant temperature for ideal gas, right? And minus we have one more term here del n r t. You can, if you want, you can write this now we know d h is T d s plus V d p. Okay. So, we can write del h by del p at constant temperature, okay. del h by so del h by del p at constant temperature is T del S by del P at 
constant temperature plus V, right. So, we can write del H by del P at constant temperature is nothing but V minus T del V by del T at constant pressure. Okay. Again, we are using here Maxwell's relation. Okay. So, we know V for ideal gas. V is in a T by P. Okay. So, here, so we can write del V by del T at constant pressure is N R by P. Okay. So, if we go back and check, okay, so del uh, U, so we had del U by del P, we had del U by del P at constant temperature equals to del H by del P at constant temperature minus del N at T by dP at constant temperature. Okay. So, if we substitute the above expressions here, we get del H by del P at constant temperature equals to 0. So, you get del U by del P at constant temperature is 0. Okay. So, this is how one can prove that for ideal gas del U by del P at constant temperature is 0. Next, we know that del G, if you go back and check, we have the expression uh, del G by del P at constant temperature is volume. Okay. Okay, del G, we have del G, we have del G by del P at constant temperature is volume. So, we get d g is v d p at constant temperature. Hmm? For ideal gas, v is nothing but a naught t by p. So, we can write d g is n r t by p times d p. Okay. Now, if you do the integration from g 1 to g 2, pressure is changes from p 1 to p 2, we get g 2 t comma p 2 minus g 1 p comma p 1 okay, is in r t l n p 2 by p 1. So, if you divide both side by number of moles, so you get This G by N, if we divide Gibbs free energy by number of moles, we get molar Gibbs free energy, or we can write G2 
bar where g2 bar and g1 bar are molar gives free energy okay so gives free energy per mole is also called chemical potential you know so we can write mu2 mu2 minus mu1 is rt ln p2 by p1 okay so higher mu refers to chemical potency if suppose p1 equals to 1 atmosphere and p2 equals to p atmosphere okay then we can write then in that case mu 2 is nothing but mu t and p and mu 1 not mu 1 equals to mu 1 not mu not temporary this is standard chemical potential. So, this is known as standard chemical potential. Okay. So, we can write from there we can write basically mu T P is nothing but mu naught T plus R T L N P. So, what is the definition of standard state then? Huh? Standard state means pressure is one atmospheric pressure and temperature can be anything. Okay? We need to define temperature. Next, we will consider, we will discuss Gibbs Gibbs Selmoj equation. Okay, so, we know G is H minus T s. So, we can write we divide G both side by T, if we divide both sides by T we get this G by T equals to H by T minus S. Now, 1 by T del H by del T at constant pressure is nothing but del H by del T at constant pressure. So, we can write D 
g by t d t minus h by t to be 2. Okay. So, this is gibbs selmoz equation. This is known as gibbs helmholtz or we can write similarly we can write d del g by t del t at constant pressure is minus del h by t to be 2. So, this is also another form of Gibbs Helmholtz equation. So, now we discuss Gibbs Helmholtz equation. Next, okay, so next we will discuss one interesting thing the chemical potential. of a pure substance in two phases in equilibrium are equal. Next, we will discuss the chemical potentials of a pure substance in two phases in equilibrium, in equilibrium are equal. We will prove it. Mm. We know this statement. Okay. Today, we are going to prove it. Okay. So, consider, so let us consider system of two phases of a pure substance in equilibrium with each other. For example, we can consider we we can consider water vapor is in equilibrium with each other at constant temperature and pressure. Okay. So, we consider we have here we have liquid water and we have water vapor and they are in equilibrium with each other at constant and P. Okay. Now, suppose G L and G V represent Gibbs 
free energy in liquid and vapor states respectively. Okay. Now, we consider that G L and G V they represent Gibbs free energy uh, in liquid and vapor states respectively. Okay. So, what is the total Gibbs free energy of the system? The total we say G is nothing but G L plus G V, right. So, we can write, so we know G is function of T P and N, okay. So, here so we can write D G is del G by del N L, okay at constant pressure and temperature times T n L plus del G V del G L here del G V by del N V at constant pressure temperature times D N V. Okay. Where D N L represents change in number of moles in the liquid state. So, so liquid and vapor they are in equilibrium with each other the sum of the molecules in the liquid state goes to vapor states go, go to vapor states right. Uh, similarly, some vapor uh, molecules in the vapor state uh, uh, comes back to the liquid state. Okay. So, and D and V represents change in number of moles in the vapor state. So, as I state just now as I stated just now that some of the molecules in the liquid state go into the vapor, vapor state and some of the liquid some of the molecules in the vapor state come to uh, liquid state okay. and since the system is in equilibrium we can write okay, or it is quite obvious it is obvious that D and L is nothing but minus D and V, right? Because the system is in equilibrium. If the system is in equilibrium, or two states are in equilibrium with each other, okay? So two states are in equilibrium with each other. So, if you use this condition in equation 1, okay, we write D G is So, if we substitute D and L by minus D and V, we get like this. This and the we then we get this one. This is 
be an error. Okay. Now, what is now del G L by D and L is nothing but mu L and okay. So, we get del G L by del N L at constant pressure temperature is mu L and del G V by del N V is mu V. So, we can write D G is mu L minus mu V times D N L. Okay. Since at equilibrium D G at constant temperature pressure is 0, we can write mu L minus mu V mu L minus mu V times D and L is 0. Now, since D and L is not 0, okay. as mentioned earlier that some of the molecules, so from liquid state goes to vapor state. Okay. So, D and L change in number of moles in liquid state is not 0. So, we can write mu L equals to mu V okay. or in other state, other words chemical potential. at or chemical potential in liquid state, chemical potential in liquid state equals to chemical potential in vapor state. Now, so we obtain that D G is mu L minus mu vapor times D N L, right. Okay. For or when if the two, two states are not in equilibrium with each other a spontaneous transfer of matter from one phase to to the other will occur in the direction such that D G T P is less than 0. So, for spontaneous change D G T P less than 0 that we know. Okay. Now, if D N L is positive. Okay. 
then in order to make dg negative mu l has to be less than mu phi okay so when chemical potential of liquid state is lower than the chemical potential of the vapor state then then few of the vapor molecules will condense to the liquid state okay on the other hand if d and l is negative So, it says to make d g negative d g at constant temperature and pressure mu l has to be greater than mu v. So, when chemical potential of the uh, liquid state is, is greater than the chemical potential of the vapor state, then some of the molecules in the liquid state will go to the vapor state. Okay. So, we know next we will discuss temperature dependence of chemical potential. So, we know del mu by del T at constant pressure is minus S, right. How did you get that or minus S m means entropy or molar entropy, entropy per mole, okay. How did you get it? We know del G by del T at constant pressure is minus S. So, we can write this one as del G by N by del T constant pressure is minus S by N and this is nothing but del mu by del T minus S by N. So, this we know and from there we, we already discussed this thing in one of the previous classes. If we plot mu versus T at constant pressure, we will get like this, oops, we will get like this, this. So, this is this is known as melting temperature or freezing temperature T m. This is boiling temperature or T b. Freezing temperature T f and this is boiling temperature T b. So, here solid stable, here liquid stable and here gas stable. This is the freezing point and this is the boiling point, right. Why we get different slope? We get different slope because entropy absolute entropy absolute entropy for gaseous state is greater than that of liquid state that than that of greater than, the, than that of solid state okay 
Okay, since this is there, so we get different slope. Different slopes. And the, and the steepest slope we observe for gaseous state. Okay. Now, what would happen if we consider pressure is, is, is changed or pressure is being changed? Okay. So, we will consider now pressure dependence boiling and freezing point. We know if we change the pressure, boiling point and freezing point changes, right? Both of, both of them they, they change. Okay. So, how do they change? Okay, let us see. Okay, we know del mu by del p at constant temperature is V bar okay, or molar volume or V m. Molar volume. So, how did we get this? We know del G by del P at constant temperature if V and if we differentiate G versus G by N, okay. so we get this. So, we can write V bar or Vm. So, how th this is how we arrived at this expression here. Now, in general, this is always true that molar volume of gaseous state is much, much higher than molar volume of liquid state which is greater than molar volume of solid state. So, this is in general. This is reverse in case of water that molar volume of uh, ice is, is lower than the molar volume of liquid water. Okay. But in general for uh, most of the matter, molar volume of gaseous state is much, much higher than the molar volume of liquid which is uh, higher than the molar volume of uh, solid state. Okay. Now, we consider and, and, and all this, uh, this all of them are positive quantities, right? Are positive quantity, right? If that is the case, so if we plot or if we increase uh, uh, the pressure hmm, or the plot of mu versus p will give you positive slope right at a part, at a fixed temperature okay if we fix the temperature and if we change the pressure okay the chemical potential will increase okay now if we plot like this this is very important plot. Okay. So, here you have low pressure, here high pressure. Okay. Okay, so, at a fixed temperature here, if we consider at a fixed temperature here, if we increase pressure, mu increases. Okay. Here also, this is now, this is our consider this point. is this is our freezing temperature at a particular pressure, low pressure. If we increase pressure, 
we get freezing point is this at high pressure value. Okay. Now, what about here? So, you consider this state. Okay. So, this is TB so boiling point at a particular temp pressure this and at a different temp pressure the value is this. So, delta T f is nothing but say T f prime minus T f is much much lower than delta T b that is T b prime minus T f right. Okay. So, why this is like this why delta T f is, is less than delta T b because of value of molar volumes. Okay. So, since molar volume of vapor state is much higher than molar volume of solid state. Okay. So, we get this means delta T f is much lower than delta T b. Okay. Thank you.